Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do something a little bit different than I've done before. And um, by that I mean I watched a bunch of YouTube videos. I was all over Instagram and I have been watching YouTube videos for so many years. And one of the things that always kind of made me curious was the products that everyone always talks about. Like, are they that good? And through watching those and actually watching my favorite YouTubers talk about the stuff they love, I got really, really interested in how come everybody's always using the same colors, the same products, the same brands. Um, is it something that I should be trying as well? So I wanted to kind of do a video today where I tried, I tested, I wore, and I have been wearing a lot of the products that you see here on YouTube that people talk about, that they rave about, that they say are just absolutely amazing and they're game changers and all that stuff. So my full face pretty much is done with products that I have heard way too much about and I needed to just sit down and try them myself. So if you are interested in learning about um, the products that everyone raves about and seeing if I think they're just as good, then please keep watching. All right guys, so the first thing that I did was my eyes and I did go ahead and use the Morphe 350 palette and this is kind of like an older classic. When this first came out, it was the first of its kind and everybody loved it, everybody needed it. It was sold out for many, many months. Um, and so when I finally got my hands on it, I couldn't wait to just try out all the colors and see if they were just as blendable as they said that they were, if they were just as pretty. So I got my Morphe 350 palette and I've had it for over a year now, but I truly do love this palette. Now if you look at it, you can tell that I only use um, a few of the colors, but I use them a lot. So I don't really use these darker colors here. And just to be perfectly honest, um, I don't always use these four on my eyes, but they're really pretty as highlight. So you can use this palette in so many, um, so many ways. You can have a very neutral, everyday, just kind of matte look. You can spice it up because there are quite a lot of shimmer shades. This one right here is almost like a foiled eyeshadow, and it is what is in the middle of my halo eye right now. And I, I love this palette. I think it's great. I do think this one is worth the hype, and I do think that if you were interested in trying it, I would go ahead and give it a try. Next, I went ahead and used the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation. Now this one is not new to me. This one I have used and loved since like the day it came out. It is amazing. This product works. It is so, so good. And it really is um, a matte. You are going to get a little bit shiny throughout the day, so it's not going to be a um, very full coverage, very matte foundation, something like the Kat Von D Locket foundation. So this foundation is really, really pretty, and the good thing about it is that there are quite a few colors, so you should be able to find one or at least be able to buy two that you can mix to have your perfect shade. I am in the shade number 104, and this is pretty much always my color. It makes me look nice and flawless, but it does have more of a medium coverage, and then you just have to build up the coverage in certain spots that you want more coverage in. Any other product that I've used on top of it has blended out so nicely. I've never had any patchiness. I've never had products not last as long. I've never had any issues with this foundation. This one is amazing. And it does say that it lasts up to 24 hours, which I think is kind of a ridiculous claim. Name one person, name one, who wears foundation for 24 hours. Nobody. And if you do, you're like going on a binge in Vegas and then like no matter what you're wearing, you're probably not going to look the best the next morning, you know what I mean? Um, but this one does last a long time. I think I've worn it for up to like 10 hours, let's say, and it still looks good. So this is a great, great product. I absolutely love it. And if you haven't tried it, you definitely have to. So the next one I was a little bit torn up on because this is more of an older cult classic here on YouTube. And it is the NARS Creamy Concealer in the color Custard. Everybody uses custard. Everybody. I've only ever seen like a couple people use different shades. So um, what I found was that everybody must be pretty tan because custard on me kind of was my skin tone. 
Um, so if they're a lot darker, then this definitely would be a highlight for me. It was not a highlight. As you can see, my under eyes are not super stark. I also did do it in the um, T-zone, the full T-zone and under eye area, and I wanted it to be a highlight. But it really just kind of matched my foundation, which again is the number 104. So I think that if I was going to use this as um, an under eye highlight, I would need to get something lighter, like maybe vanilla. Um, I think Chantilly was another one, but I'm, I think vanilla, I don't know. So custard was just not a highlight for me. It definitely blended more into the color of my foundation and my skin. Something else that I found with this foundation is that it is very, very thick. And so for somebody like me who has very large set eyes, I will crease under my eyes a little bit no matter what I am wearing. And there are ways to prevent that. And I always do put on under eye cream underneath my foundation just to fill in those lines so that product isn't sinking in there and making them more obvious. Now, NARS Creamy Concealer is so thick for me that I have way more creasing than I'm used to. I have a mirror right here, just so you know. I do think this um, product is wearing well. It's not disappearing. It definitely has covered all of my under eye circles. And um, in the T-zone here, it's really covered up and made my face look very flawless. So it's a beautiful foundation. However, it's a little bit too thick for me, but overall, I would still use it again. Um, I would just get a lighter color because custard, which is what everybody uses, is too dark for me to be a highlight. Next, I went ahead and set my under eye area and everywhere else that I put concealer with the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. I love this stuff. I've been using it for a while. Um, a lot of people use the Secret Brightening Powder, and um, I don't really like that one. It's too drying for my under eyes, and so no matter how little, it's way too drying. It ends up making me look crazy like 10 minutes later. I've creased really, really bad. It kind of lifts whatever product is on there for me, um, and so I don't have as much coverage as I want. And then as I continue wearing it, I just end up looking really, really bad. So the translucent one works very well for me. It's a lot thicker. Um, as you can see, it's, a, it's not quite as finely milled, and it also has a little bit of a tint to it. It's a little bit like a sand color, a little bit yellow. Um, but it's not like a banana shade. Um, but I really like it setting my under eyes. Alright, so next I was so excited about this one especially because I've heard so many people talk about the beautiful bronze that you're going to get and the amazing smell that comes with the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzers. Now they do come in two colors. They come in light bronze and just bronze. Um, so if you actually look at them in person, they don't look very different. This is the lighter one, and this is the darker one. On camera, this one does look a lot darker, but I'm telling you in person, when you look at them, they look almost identical. So I was kind of just like, um, okay. <laughs> like, is it gonna really show a difference? So I did go ahead and just use the darker one today. Generally, I use the lighter one, but I just bought this one, and I wanted to see what it looked like. Um, now, like I said, everybody talks about the amazing smell that these butter bronzers have. So the first thing I did was rip it open and take a big, nice, good smell. And you know what? I hate it. I hate the smell of this. It smells like fake, artificial, tanning, just nastiness. It does not smell good to me at all. I can see where they're going. It could smell good. It could smell a lot better. But it, for me, it just doesn't. Every time that I use it, I can literally smell it for like a good 30 to 45 minutes after because the smell lingers on my face and I just feel nauseous. Honestly, I cannot stand the smell of this stuff. So that was very disappointing when I tried this product. I was expecting just like heaven to open when I smelled this and instead I literally feel nauseous and sick to my stomach. So this smell is not for me, but the color is absolutely gorgeous. I really, really like them. Um, the darker shade is new for me. I just picked this up the other day. I normally use the lighter one, but I was noticing that I had to put on way too many more layers in order for it to actually appear on my skin. So um, I picked up the darker one, and I still had to use a few layers. Like You do have to build this up to the color intensity that you're looking for, 
but it's really pretty and it's really really blendable so the fact that they called it a butter bronzer is just perfect um, because it really is it's just like butter it melts right in and it has sat on top of a bunch of different products of mine whether it's high-end or low-end and it's always looked great it wears really really beautifully if you look at my skin I just look nice and sun-kissed and um, very natural there's nothing fake about it so this stuff is an absolute plus for me except for the smell is awful so don't let them fool you it does not smell good <laughs> so next for highlight I wanted to use the Laura Geller gilded honey color this is beautiful it's really really pretty it's very very golden so if you have lighter skin than me um, you're not gonna like this it's not gonna look good on you because it's so golden if you've got dark skin if you have a tan this is gonna be gorgeous so so pretty on you but you do have to be a little bit careful with it if you have a lighter skin tone um, in order for this to look its best I would recommend spraying your brush with some kind of either setting spray the Mac fix plus or just even like a little bit of water just to have it lay on top of something and really shine through on its own it's fine I do a couple layers generally and it looks awesome but I do notice that if my brush is wet when I use it um, that it works very very well so I do like this one I don't always reach for it again because it's so golden it doesn't always look good on me um, but it's good I definitely do recommend it but I think that there are a lot of more affordable um, highlighters out there that are just as good even better than this one um, so you know try it but don't like go out of your way for it in my opinion next I wanted to try this is an oldie but a goodie as far as like YouTube goes a lot of people have talked about it and I don't hear much about it nowadays but I did definitely hear Jaclyn Hill talk a, a lot about it. And this is the Hourglass Ambient Radiant Light Powder. And it's an illuminating powder. So for that, I was a little bit confused as how I was supposed to use it. It looks like this. It's really, really pretty. It does look just like a glow. A glow from within. Like even just in the pan itself. So I wasn't sure if I was supposed to use this as like just a straight up highlight so I did try to use it as just a highlight like I would like the Laura Geller Gilded Honey and you couldn't see it I ended up doing my full highlight with the Laura Geller and then I went over my entire face with a dual fiber brush and I dusted this everywhere and my skin is absolutely glowing it looks so pretty so so pretty I've been wearing my full face for quite a few hours now I went to lunch I've been playing with my baby I have been out and about and I still look very good very very flawless and I was a little bit afraid um, putting shimmer or any kind of illumination or uh, what's it called a lighting powder all over my face because I have normal to oily skin and I don't want to accentuate any oils I like very very matte skin so putting this everywhere was very difficult for me and I have been very nervous every time I look in the mirror I'm so nervous I'm going to look just like a giant grease ball and I'm going to be so mad at myself but this looks so gorgeous so flawless my skin just looks like it's beaming and this is totally worth every penny I don't know how much this is I'll have to link it somewhere over here but this is absolutely gorgeous and I do recommend that anybody try this um, whether you're looking for just something subtle or you want to put it everywhere and just look amazing do it because you're gonna love it next I wanted to do the LA girl blushes now these are super super affordable they're like $3.99 you get a very good sized pan you get 0.25 ounces and I picked up the color Just Playful because I like these kind of mauve -y tones. And this is more of like a brown-based mauve. It's not too pink. And the color payoff on here was gorgeous. I did just use a little bit right here on the apples of my cheeks. And I love this product. I definitely recommend trying these out. And I'm going to be getting um, a lot more colors in this because look how much you get. I mean, you get so much in here. So I do recommend and stand by the LA Girl blushes. I think they're great. They definitely give NYX a run for their money because NYX, I think, has one of the best drugstore blushes, just hands down. Last but not least, let's talk about lashes. So a lot of people have been talking about the Maybelline, 
the Colossal Big Shot. I've had this for a little while now and I always end up using other products with it because no matter how many times I watch people do it, then like my lashes just didn't act the same when I used this. And I tried it today a different way and they finally did their job. So let me tell you, this stuff is gorgeous, but you do not want to curl your lashes first. Um, something about having your lashes just natural, just sticking straight out, allows the brush to really get in there and coat everything and make them look super big, nice and plump, full and long. And um, if you curl your lashes first, like I normally do, the brush, the wand, is just not able to really get in there and do its job. I don't know why, but I have found that in order for this guy to work, you need to not curl your lashes first. So this is a good one. It's not great. I've definitely used other mascaras that on their own give me the exact look that I'm going for. This one's about halfway there. Um, so yeah, I mean, I like how it looks, but I don't think that it is as amazing as everybody else. All right, guys, so that is the end of today's video. I hope you learned a couple things. If you have any other suggestions or would like me to review a certain product, please let me know in the comments down below, and I will be sure to do that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.